And Deptika Laurent joins me now in the studio, having spent the morning scanning the world's headlines mm -hmm. and seeing what's making news. Hello, Dipti. Hi, Annette. And we're going to start in Sri Lanka, where the country is voting in national elections tomorrow, just months after that horrific uh, terrorist attack. That's right. Corruption, um, authoritarianism and, of course, as you mentioned, Islamic terrorism uh, are major issues for voters as they head to the polling stations this weekend uh, or Saturday, to be exact. Uh, back in April, 269 people were killed after suicide attacks ripped through Easter services. Um, in the elections uh, on Saturday, there are a record number of candidates, 35 who are vying for the presidency, um, including Gotabaya Rajapaksa. Now, he's one of the favorites. He's the brother of former Sri Lankan President Mahinda Rajapaksa, a Buddhist, Buddhist, a Buddhist nationalist, rather. If Gotabaya wins, as, um, as predicted, um, some worry that the future government could stoke religious divisions, or as uh, the French paper La Croix says here, that we could see a return of nationalism to the country. The Australian website The Conversation says Gotabaya is seen by the majority uh, of Sinhalese Sri Lankans as a, quote, national hero for orchestrating the military defeat of the Tamil Tigers in the Civil War, but um, and also for his aggressive stance on terrorism. But critics accuse him of uh, overseeing torture, rape, and brutal interrogations in the aftermath of that war. Now, here in France, a lot of focus on that one-year anniversary of the Yellow Vest uh, movement, Dipti. It's dominating a lot of the front pages today. Let's show you the front page of uh, La Croix. Uh, the Yellow Vest movement began a year ago, almost day for day. It was uh, initially a knee-jerk reaction to a proposed hike in carbon taxes, but as we know, it blossomed into a grassroots movement against social inequality, urban rural disparities, and be really became a symbol of um, boiling French anger. The movement of course, was also hijacked by violent extremist groups who wrought havoc across France. We, we can't really forget, forget those images. Um, but uh, and La Croix says the, the crisis is far from over. Um, the communist paper L'Humanité has decided to look at the positive um, things that the movement brought, um, noting that it enabled an entire part of disenfranchised France to expose real social problems, a lack of public services, unemployment, financial difficulties for working class families. The movement gave these people visibility, the paper says. Now, a Kurdish Iranian refugee who was detained by Australian uh, authorities on Manus Island for the last six years has finally left that island. And as you see on the front page of The Guardian today, Annette, he says he's never going back. Uh, Behrouz Bouchani, he, he became a, really an unofficial spokesman for the rights of asylum seekers being held in Australian offshore detention centres. He's, um, uh, there he is on the front page of The Guardian. Um, the, the New Zealand website Stuff um, notes that his book, No Friend But the Mountain, detailed life in the, um, in the detention centre. It won Australia's top literary prize. Uh, and uh, he finally got a visa this week uh, to travel to New Zealand for a literary festival. It'll be the first time he's leaving um, uh, Manus Island in six years. The Kiwi website Stuff reminds us that uh, Bhutani fled Iran in uh, 2013 after the magazine he worked for published anti-government articles. He fled to Indonesia and paid people smugglers to, to come to Australia, but was um, uh, detained and held in Manus Island until recently. He said that that whole experience really has negatively impacted the region and he wants to use his freedom now to speak out about uh, the rights of asylum. And writing that book was an extraordinary feat on his part because he sent one line by one line via WhatsApp text, apparently. It, it, an extraordinary story. OK, end of the week, it's Friday. <laughs> Time for a change of pace and you've got some animal stories for us, is that right? Yeah, that's right. There are a couple of pictures, actually. So this one behind me, it's, this story went viral this week. A retired Michigan uh, amateur photographer captured a three antler deer net in the woods. It's a one in a million find, according to one uh, veterinarian interviewed by uh, the Washington Post. And it actually happens um, because deer antlers, uh, well, they shed at the end of winter and then they grow new ones uh, at the beginning of winter. And apparently, this kind of um, thing can happen when uh, they don't shed their antlers properly. Um, let's uh, also show you this picture of uh, this really cute puppy, a uh, narwhal. He's a, uh, a puppy at an anim animal rescue service, also in the U.S. You'll note that he was, he's got a 
tail on his forehead. Um, it's a birth defect. Um, rescuers have dubbed him the unicorn puppy. And apart from being different, he's actually very healthy. Um, and this picture uh, went viral this week, and the center has been receiving numerous offers of adoption. But they've actually halted the process now because they're worried that people might want to adopt him for the wrong reasons. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> and finally, a nine-year-old, I cannot believe that, a nine-year-old <laughs> from Amsterdam is soon to be the youngest ever university graduate. Yeah, that's right. Lawrence Simons, he's uh, currently finishing up his uh, tertiary degree in electrical engineering, having completed it in just nine months, Annette. Um, and he's only nine. He, he finished high school last year at the age of eight. Uh, and now uh, with all this, uh, all this education, he's mulling over his options for post graduate degrees. He wanted perhaps the US, but he's also tempted by Oxford or Cambridge. Um, the little boy says he wants to become an astronomer or a heart surgeon. Um, he speaks four languages. He's been compared to Stephen Hawking and Albert Einstein, and he'll make you feel hopelessly inadequate today. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Thanks for that, Dipti. And if you want to take a look at the stories we've just been talking about, you can, of course, head to our website, that being France24.com.